Hello everybody, welcome to another retro edition of the Price is Right Pricing Game Recap, starring your host, myself, Mr. Horgan, and from Chris Pantis, Chris New Brunswick, Canada, <laughs> say that ten times fast, BJ Mason Television! That's right, and I, I'm the president and owner of BJM TV Canada headquarters up here in Chris Pantis. Man, we're having a very cold winter up here. How cold is it? Well, I saw roosters rushing into the Kentucky Fried Chicken down the road, <laughs> and they were begging <laughs> to use the pressure cooker. <laughs> yeah. Good one. Yeah, it is a good one. <laughs> All right, we got a dynamite show tonight, don't we, Mr. Morgan? We certainly do. Uh, for this retro edition of The Price is Right Pricing and Recap, we're going back to April 20th, 1982. And for those users who have marijuana, that means a uh, 420. Oh my god, I don't know that. Oh. My shit, play on that show, Mr. Horgan. Okay, um. Okay, here are the pricing games that were played on this day in Prices Right History Card Game, Trader Bob, Range Game, Race Game. Ten chances and penny ante. Okay, the first contestant up on stage was Pearl. She at first bid eight hundred ninety-nine dollars on an antique solid oak hall tree, modeled by the dazzling Diane Parkinson. But she and the first other three contestants who were called on down first all overbid. So, when she bid again, she gave a bid of $398. The actual retail price, $468. She was off by 70 bucks that time. Pearl played card game for a Mazda GLC four-door sedan, modeled by the happy Holly Falstrom. And if Pearl won that card, she would also get a page alert silent car alarm and paging system modeled by the juicy Janice Pennington. Now, how far did Pearl have to be within uh, the actual retail price of the car without going over? Well, she thought $100, but couldn't be that bad as Bob put it. Well, when Pearl drew the car to see how much she had to be off by, she drew the $600 car. So she had to come within $600 of the actual retail price without going over. Okay, now for her first draw of the cards, she drew a two of spades, so that's $200. She drew again, because obviously that, that car wasn't going to be less than $200. For the second card, she drew a two of clubs another 200 So she's now up to $400. Pearl drew again. This time she got the seven of clubs. That's $700 more for a total of $1,100. Pearl drew a fourth card and that was the four of diamonds. $400 added. That's now a total of $1,500. Next Pearl drew the queen of clubs. So that's a thousand dollars for a face card such as the Queen. And now she was up to two thousand five hundred dollars. Pearl kept on drawing. This time she got the nine of clubs. So we add nine hundred dollars to her previous total of twenty five hundred for a total of three thousand four hundred dollars. Now she drew the Queen of Spades. That's another thousand dollars. That's five thousand dollars. Uh, five thousand four hundred. Uh, that, that. Let's go back. Two hundred plus two hundred is four hundred. Plus seven hundred is eleven hundred. Eleven hundred plus four hundred is fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred plus a thousand is twenty five hundred. Plus nine hundred thirty four hundred. Plus a thousand is four thousand four hundred. Do the math, Mr. Morgan. 
That I just did. <laughs> okay, now for Pearl's eighth card, she drew the six of spades. We had six hundred to forty-four hundred. That's five thousand dollars. Pearl drew another card. This time, it was the jack of spades. Another thousand dollars. That's six thousand dollars she was up to. Pearl drew another card, and that was the six of hearts. That's six hundred dollars more for a total of. $6,600, and that's when Pearl stopped. Bob told Pearl in the beginning of the game, whenever she wanted to stop, she had to smack her hand down on the table like this. I'll stop. All right. Now, uh, Bob mentioned that there were, like, horse players that would stop on a price such as $6,600. <laughs> <laughs> So, Pearl's bid, 6600 She has to come within $600 without going over. And when Bob revealed the actual retail price of the Mazda GLC four-door sedan, it was $7,215 for a difference of... six hundred. Fifteen dollars! Oh, no! Oh! Pearl lost by fifteen dollars! Oh, too bad! Oh. What are you going to do? Oh, my goodness. If she had drawn one more card, uh, couldn't have been more than a six. She probably could have gotten it, but... Well, okay, BJ Mason Television, as we aren't through, let's now hear about pricing game number two. All right, you know, $1,000 about, I'm here in Echo here. Ah, uh, never mind, I'm, I'll just get off of this game. $1,000 draw from the special deck for about two. Anyway, let's get on to the next game. Oh boy, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this one. The second contestant was Francois from Montreal, Quebec, up here in Canada. That's about a nine hour drive from right here. She was vacationing with four ladies. Bob and Francois had a little chat about what Francois had been doing on the trip to Los Angeles. And Bob told Francois about how many members of the audience had seen his star on Hollywood Walk of Fame and ask if Francois has seen it. She hasn't. No, I'm not joking. Mm. Francois then asked, is it there? <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that question, man. Yes. Hmm, it is. Man, Francois doesn't even know if her left to her right, or her right to her left, whatever right. you like to say it. Anyway, I'm, I can rant about this all night. Let's just get on the game here. Francois bid $325 on a Whirlpool trash compactor filed by Diane. The actual retail price of the trash compactor was $368. That was a great bid, huh, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it was. Only off by, only off by 23 bucks. Hmm. Pretty good. Very good. Francois played Trader Bob for a chance to win a trip to Australia, which included a six-night stay at the deluxe 43-story Sydney Hilton International. This is round trip from Los Angeles, as always. The trip was modeled by Janet. Also included was a set of ATP luggage by Airway, brought out by Holly on... The Price is Right train! Woo -hoo! Choo choo! <laughs> Alright. It's a prize worth $5,158. Diane brought out the first small prize, which was a Con Air Pro Style hair dryer. Diane brought it over without revealing its price. Very important. The two prizes for the first trade were a pair of King shoes modeled by Holly and a Washington Forge 10-inch knife, modeled by Janet. 
Francois chose the shoes, leaving its prices higher than the hair dryer, according to Francois' friends in the audience. That's what they said. Janet reveals the price of the knife to be $40. Ooh. Oh, boy. Looks like she's going to need a new group of friends, Francois, that is, before we're done here. Yeah, I don't think the audience didn't like Francois' choice of the shoes now, did they? No, you said it. Okay. The next two prices brought out were a GE, not General Electric, I don't think, portable AC-DC cassette recorder with automatic shut-off, AC adapter included. That was followed by Holly. You know, come to think of it, I think that would play AC-DC tapes, I think. I'll have to find out. Make sure. Thank you. Also, there was a Fidelity Electronic Mate Sensoring Chest Challenger for a chess game. Six AA batteries not included. Not included. That was followed by Diane. You know, Bob almost jumped in the middle of the description and apologized to <coughs> Johnny O for interrupting. Because he's he eager to get on with this game here. Fresh Wash, because they've been wasting a lot of time with the card game and uh, this one. Fresh Wash, she's I think she's taking a lot of time here. Francois said she uh, lost already. Alright. Blame the friends for picking the shoes. <laughs> Alright. Francois chose the chess game, believing they cost more than the shoes. Holly revealed the cassette recorder price to be $33. Named after a, same price, named after a famous studio in Hollywood. Hmm. That, now, that was less than the knife that we were talking about in the earlier part of the game. Now, that made Bob believe that Francois isn't doing too good right now. Alright, now, for the third and final trade, there was a Regina electric broom modeled by Holly, and a Norco Ladybug razor modeled by Janet. Francois chose the broom, and... The razor price revealed by Janet was fifty-five dollars. I think Francois is going to be staying in L.A. instead of going to uh, Australia. But let's find out, huh? Yep. Okay. The hair dryer price revealed by Bob was forty dollars. Thank you. Actually, thirty. Thirty. Sorry. Don't don't give me the losing horn. Sorry. Sorry. Thirty. I'm I'm sorry. I, 30, thank you for correcting me. I've, I've got my poison, my 30 fixed up. And Francois said she thinks the shoes are $22 or $18. Again, blame the friends. <laughs> Bob revealed the price of the shoes to be... $15, and the game was over. But... Francois gets the shoes because that was her last successful trade. And Francois added, too bad. Anyway, that's going to be a consolation win with the shoes one. Mr. Horgan, do your thing. Blame it on the shoes. Oh boy, she's going to remember that for a long, long time. <laughs> and forget, forgive me for saying 40 instead of 30. I, I, I... I, I saw the show, but I, I just got so caught up. Okay, Mr. Horgan, now go with Glee to price the game number three. Let's do it. Just to, and just to let you know, we all make mistakes, so it's nothing to fret about. Hey, uh, hey, I, let's just get to the next game then. Okay. Wow. The next contestant up on stage was Catherine with a C. She bid $526 on an Apache wood-burning stove with a generous supply of Kentucky Fried Chicken added, modeled by Holly. Actual retail price, $799. Catherine played range game for a Sherwood Corporation double indemnity modular sofa with a foam bed, modeled by Diane. Okay, now, as the uh, $150 range, 
was climbing up the scale. Catherine stopped that $150 range between about $1,500 and $1,650. Now Bob has claimed that some contestants lose on range gain because of stopping the range finder too early or too late. Well, as we all know, Bob would go on to later say, you can't stop the range finder too too soon because it can't be restarted again for 37 hours. 37 hours, 34 hours, whatever. I know. All right, let's find out if Catherine won when the actual retail price appeared in the dark green strip. It turned out that it was one thousand five hundred. Catherine got it just barely, I think. So we got ourselves a winner. That's a nice win. All right, BJ Mason Television, it's time for more for pricing game result number four. It's all yours. Yeah, the TFC thing, like, I'm an accidentally coming. I just, uh, and how appropriate. I, uh, I said at the top of the show that Woodrow were rushing into the KFC and begging to use the pressure cooker, and it just came back to bite me in the face, huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't see that one coming. Mm. Anyway, the fourth contestant was Harold, an elementary school teacher from San Diego, California. He made $455 on a Kelvinator portable convertible dishwasher with cutting board top. He features eight automatic cycles and energy saving grind cycles modeled by Holly. And Harold also got a supply of electrostatic dishwashing detergent. Could go great with that. How yep. appropriate. The actual retail price of the dishwasher was $480. Carol was off by only $25. Another good bid there. Hmm. Yep. Carol's play race game for a chance to win these four prizes. First was a Dynair dining set, which included oak pullback chairs and pedestal tables. Second was a Gold Star 19-inch color with remote control and bright clear fixture. Third, a pair of Lazy Boy, Lazy Rockers, Swivel Rockers, featuring a back. And lastly, a Sunray Deluxe Range, featuring Rose Bake Guides, Interval Timer, Black Glass Doors. The dining set and rockers were modeled by Janet, and the TV and Range were modeled by Diane. Now, when the 45 seconds started, the clock started prematurely because Bob said, go after finding out that Harold didn't know what to do. So, Harold had 43 seconds to do this. Yeah, he was a little confused there. Huh. Yeah. Because remember, you got to pull down the handle and then, you know, you, you've seen the game before. All right. When the 43 seconds started, Harold placed $429 on the TV, $818 on the range, $692 on the rockers, and $595 on the table and chairs. With 29 seconds left, Harold pulled the handle and he had one right. For the next chance, Harold placed $818 on the rocker and $692 on the range. With 14 seconds left, going down to 13, Harold pulled down the handle and had zero right. Now, for possibly his final chance, Harold placed $595 on the rocker. $818 on the table and chairs, $692 on the TV, and $429 on the range as the clock reached zero. And when Harold went back and pulled down that handle, he ended up having two right. So Harold won something. What was it that Harold got? Let's find out. Janice revealed the price of the table and chairs, and it was $818. So Harold won the most expensive of the four prizes there. Janice revealed the price of the rockers to be $692. Diane revealed the price of the range to be $429. That was right, too. 
and the price of the TV that Diane revealed was $595. So Harold won the table and chairs and the range, totaling $1,247. That's going to be a consolation win, and not a bad one at that. Mr. Horgan, do your thing. Pretty good consolation win for Harold. Hey, I just said that. Yep. Okay, Mr. Horgan, let's keep this show alive with price of game number five. Go right ahead. All right. The fifth contestant was Kenneth. He bid $179 on a Yashita FX3 compact SLR camera brought down from the ceiling. The actual retail price, $334. He played 10 chances for a Fargoware broiler rotisserie, a Panasonic home stereo system, the Broiler rotisserie and the home stereo system were modeled by Janice. And a Pontiac four-cylinder front-wheel drive Day 2000 Coupe, modeled by Holly. Now, first off for the Broiler rotisserie, Kenneth had to use two out of the three following numbers, four, eight, and zero. For Kenneth's first chance, he wrote down $48. Was that right? No, it wasn't. For his second chance, he wrote down $40. Was that right? No, it wasn't. Next, he wrote $80. I have a good feeling on this one. Was that right? Yes, it was. And BJ Mason Television even knew it. Okay, now on to the home stereo system. Kenneth had to use three of the following four numbers, 7, 3, 0, and 5. Kenneth first wrote down $573. Was that the price? No, it wasn't. Next, he wrote down $375. Was that the price? No, it was not. Then he wrote down $750. Was that the price? Yes, it was. So that's two prizes won and just one more to go. Now, on to the car. Kenneth had to use four of the following five numbers. 9, 7, 3, 0, and 5. First, he wrote down $7,539. Was that the price of the car? No, it wasn't. Next, he wrote down $7,095. Was that the price of the car? No, it wasn't. He has two chances left now to win it. Next, he wrote down $9,735. Was that the price of the car? No, it wasn't. Now, this is his last chance to win the car. Kenneth broke down $7,950. Well, I will say that that price he wrote down is a much better selection than the previous three he wrote down. All right, here goes. Was $7,950 the price of the Pontiac Day 2000 Coupe? No, it wasn't! Oh! Bob revealed the actual retail price to be $7,530. Oh. Too bad. However, Kenneth did win the boiler rotisserie and the home stereo system for a grand total of $830. And that is a consolation win. And now, BJ Mason Television, my friend, let's hear about the pricing game 
that brought this show to an end. Will do, Mr. Morgan. The sixth and final contestant was Patricia. She bid $725 on two brass sculptures and a gleaming brass geometric interplate swag lamp modeled from Artisan House, modeled by Diane. The actual retail price of the sculptures and swag lamp was $850. Mm. All right. Patricia played Penny Ante for a chance to win a 484 Rock Roller Juice Box with Holly dancing to the music. A prize worth $2,995. Now Bob gave Patricia the three pennies. Hopefully she doesn't lose them all in this game. The two products in this game are, on the penny side, Lysol Trigger Bathroom Cleaner. And on the anti side, Panel Magic Cleaner. The price of the Lysol is either $1.67. $1.49, $1.25, or $1.36. Patricia said $1.67. Was that right? No. Patricia loses a penny. Patricia then said $1.49. How about it?
wing frame mirror, six drawer, two door chest, chair back headboard, and two nightstands. A Tony Art of Los Angeles Total Concept Irish Bedding Ensemble. Plus a new mattress set from Bassett Dreammaker. The entire bedroom group, followed by Diane. And a blue colored dune buggy with buggy whip. That was modeled by Jen. Now, uh, Catherine chose to pass that showcase to Patricia. Patricia gave a bid of $10,200. Now, the audience did not like that choice of bid, but Bob was informing the audience to not get mad at Patricia. She was just doing her best. I know, and I know people watching at home were playing along too, I'm guessing. Oh, well, I'm sure of it. Okay, now on to showcase number two. Yeah. Okay, showcase number two. It involved wonderful ways to get wet. First off, we had his and her decor scuba gear, followed by Holly. Next was a Riviera Portable Tiger Hot Tub, followed by Jen. And last but not least, a Catalina 22 sailboat with trailer included, followed by Diane. Catherine gave a bid of one dollar. Now, you're probably wondering why did Catherine bid one dollar? It's because she believed Patricia went over. And most of the audience believe that too. Okay, let's get to those showcase actual retail prices. Okay, Bob went to Catherine first. Catherine bid one dollar. Actual retail price, $11,975 for a difference of $11,974. And now over to Patricia. Her bid, $10,200. Once again, the audience did not like this choice of bid. The actual retail price of Patricia's showcase was... Oh, this is very interesting. Ten thousand two oh nine for a difference of only nine dollars. That means Patricia is a double showcase winner. And the way she won both showcases, my goodness, the one dollar bid gets beaten with. Wow! An, an incredible bid! <gasps> wow! I, I'll tell you what, folks. You, this is something that doesn't happen very very often on Price is Right. Wow! Therefore, Patricia's named the Showcase MVP. And uh, speaking of MVP, MVP, Catherine is the pricing game MVP because she won her pricing game and the thousand dollars in Chokey Showdown number one. The contestant recognition contestants are Francois, Harold, and Kenneth for their respective small wins. Wow. Uh, what an amazing showcase win by Patricia. That definitely blew me away. <laughs> um, Patricia won a grand total of $23,034 in prizes. And that showcase result will definitely go down as one of the most historic moments in Price is Right ever. Wow! Yeah. America was stunned, huh? Totally stunned. Promotional consideration for this retro edition of the Price is Right Price Game Recap is provided by, in my opinion, Probably the greatest movie that came out in 1982. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. 
Okay, so uh, the next time BJ Mason Television and I will present to you a pricing game recap in the retro edition will be for November 8th, 1993. So that'll be fun. Um, BJ Mason Television, if you are... Oh, you're here. I just want to say it was a lot of fun having you join me once again, and I look forward on doing this again next time. I'll be here next time. And you're not going to believe it. I was over there looking for a movie. You know what I was looking for? What's that? One. Oh, you got baptized in Richmond Eye as well. Awesome, dude. Awesome. Totally awesome. You got to show it to everyone when I uh, cue you for the goodbye, which we're about to do right now. This has been the retro edition of the Price is Right Pricing Game Recap on my channel on YouTube. This has been Mr. Horgan from Woodbridge, New Jersey. And this has been B.J. Mason Television from the headquarters of BGM TV Canada saying, Awesome! Totally awesome! And get fast time to Richmond High. Anyway, don't forget to get your pets spare nerves. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye! So long, everyone!